The first thing to do is to slow down. Read lighter stuff. All of us wish we could read more books, but setting and hitting reading goals is often a lot harder than we think it is when we're full of inspiration at the beginning of what we hope will be a great reading run. And the reason for that is that a lot of us tend to lean into lists and setting arbitrary goals about the number of books that we set out to read. By the end of this video, my hope is that by hearing my thought process on how to read more or at least to get more out of what I'm reading, you'll be able to have better reading goals for yourself. So the first thing to avoid is to get a list from someone and read all of the books that they say are the 10 greatest this, the top most essential that. I'm guilty of making these lists and I will continue to make them, but the reason I list out books that way is that it helps my own thinking. It helps me state my opinions more clearly. And so when you're hearing someone else do that, take it for what it is. You're not supposed to hold yourself accountable to someone else's opinion of what, say, the greatest American novels are or the most entertaining books to come out since 2000. So that's number one, avoid other people's lists. Number two is avoid making lists for yourself. So just because you sat down and you researched a lot of titles at one point in time and you put them on a list doesn't mean that future you is going to click with those titles or want to read them. The real goal of reading, and this is the main point that I hope to be able to get across in this video, is to click with what you're reading on all levels. You want your reading experience, especially when it comes to reading great novels, to be that of feeling like the work you're putting in to read that book is the most important thing you could be working on. You're getting entertainment out of it. You're getting existential value out of it. You're connecting with that writer on a very deep level and having essentially the best conversation possible. That's like, that's the goal, right? Like that's, that's what we all wish we could get out of books. It's not about downloading information. And that's my next point is don't make reading be about downloading information. You're not reading all of the novels by a certain writer to know their stance on every single topic. And you're not reading nonfiction so that you can regurgitate random facts about things. It's all about enhancing your perspective. And so in fiction, that happens on a really human level. In nonfiction, you're grappling with big topics, big ideas. It's a lot harder to wrap your head around a concept like government if you're trying to access that topic strictly through fiction. You'll get there on a really human level, but you're gonna need to read some great nonfiction in order to put together a really nuanced understanding of a big topic like that. Whew. So let's go through some practical steps for how to actually set out to have a good reading goal and to hold yourself accountable to that goal. The first thing to do is to slow down. You wanna be enjoying reading when you're reading and if you're forcing yourself to pace through a book at a certain rate, that's not gonna last long unless you're trying to be masochistic about your reading habit. It's certainly possible to tear through like 50 to 60 pages of a book per day, even with a nine to five working schedule and do that for an entire year and get through a lot of books. But beyond just being proud of yourself for having made it through that many titles, what is that experience amounting to? Was it joy? Did you enjoy that process? Probably not. Um, and so, so my, first, my first tip here is to slow down and find joy in what you're doing. Find joy in the books that you're reading. If, if that's not an integral part of the process, then it's not gonna be sustainable. My second piece of practical advice is to dabble, dabble a lot. The reason why I buy books is because I like to have a lot of them available to me on a shelf so that I can pull one down, try it out, see what I'm in the mood for and keep going. Also, I tend to like to reread a lot of books that I love. For instance, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I wouldn't say is even in my top 50 books, but I've reread it like four or five times. And I can't say that about 50 other titles. 
So just having books around that I've gotten value out of in one way or another, I tend to be drawn back to them and get back into them. And that is probably the main tenet of my reading habit. Like the thing that keeps me reading at a pretty decent clip is having books that I love just lying around so that when the time is right, I can find them or they can find me. I'm not really sure how it works. But probably the worst thing you can do, unless you are really excited about every single thing on your list, is to put books in a certain order and say, I'm gonna read this then, that tomorrow, that the next day. That, at least for me, has never worked and it hasn't worked for most of my friends and family members. I've given a lot of other practical tips in other videos and plenty of other people have too for how to carve out time or how to change habits in your daily life in order to encourage you to read more. But the truth is that reading takes work and like anything that requires work, you're gonna have to be a little bit disciplined about it one way or another in order to read more. So make reading social, make reading fun. Book clubs have been around for a really long time for this reason. Having someone else to read a book with can make reading a book more fun. But again, we get back to the problem of having to read a book in a certain amount of time just because you've arbitrarily bound yourself to that commitment. You know, you've decided, oh, I'm gonna read this book in this certain amount of time. So what I actually prefer to do is read at my own pace, read a lot of stuff, read bits and pieces of a lot of different novels. Plenty of the things you see on my shelf, I haven't finished, but I've read a decent chunk of. And then just talk about books with my friends. I can't tell you the number of times I've talked about Moby Dick with people and often neither of us have finished it. I've only gotten about 65% of the way through that book and I would love to finish it this year. I revere it. I think it's one of the best novels ever written and it's certainly one of the best American novels, but I'm taking my time with it. Like I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm not gonna force myself through the whole thing all at once just because it's on my list. My last piece of advice, and I think this is my best piece of advice, is to only take on books that you can handle. So much like running, if you haven't been running in a while, you won't be able to run 10 miles in a row without stopping. That's just gonna be too hard for you but you could probably do a couple. And that's the case with books as well. Like, don't pick up Infinite Jest to kick off your, your new reading habit. You wanna start small. You don't wanna stay small. You don't wanna just read books because they're short and it's easy to finish them and it's easy to check them off your list, but take on what you can handle. And the other factor there to consider is the difficulty of the sentences because oftentimes truly great writing is also a bit more difficult to synthesize. And anyone, no matter how good of a reader they are, is going to have to put in more energy to get the full experience out of a book like that. So read lighter stuff. I mean, that's probably, that's, that's probably the best way to tear through a lot of titles is to keep most of what you take in on the lighter side. I don't read enough lighter books. I wish that I did, but I tend to go in for stuff by this guy and none of it, none of it's very easy reading. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I hope that by me talking through my perspective on this and telling you the things that I don't do and the things that I do my best to avoid and then the tendencies that I have that have worked for me over time, I hope that you got something out of hearing that. If you've been enjoying my videos, the best way that you can support is to subscribe and check out some of my other stuff. I'm working on some pretty ambitious projects in 2023, both for videos and I'm hoping to put out a short novel that I've had in the works for a long time. So be looking out for some pretty big stuff coming later this year. If you're subscribed, you'll know. You'll know when, when this stuff is being put out. So yeah, please subscribe. It would mean a lot to me.